Hey guys, if you're a new student to economics, it will not be long before you start talking about supply and demand. I don't care if you're taking a microeconomics class or a macroeconomics class. Guys, if you're a first year student, you're probably gonna do supply and demand very early in the semester. And guys, right there can be a tripping point for a lot of students and it oftentimes has to do with the fact that economists differentiate between the term demand and quantity demanded. And you want to know what an economist means when we use this term versus this term. If you understand the difference it's going to make it a lot easier when you cover this topic in your classes okay here in a nutshell is the difference guys demand is a relationship quantity demanded is a specific amount that's right demand is not an amount it is a relationship okay by the way if you get to the graph right in the graph you see price and quantity and for this video since i'm only talking about the demand function i'm actually going to put a qd to say hey i'm showing the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now, later on in the unit, when you're doing supply and demand, of course, you're going to put in a supply curve, right? You're going to get that supply curve in there. And once you put the supply curve, we drop the D because the Q becomes a placeholder for both QS and QD. But in this video, since we're just talking about demand, I want to be very specific that what we're measuring horizontally is quantity demanded. And again, this entire curve represents a relationship, hence we title it D, never QD. We title it D for demand because the whole line represents the relationship between P and QD. To be very explicit about that, guys, you have a price point right here. That horizontal distance, right, QD is measured horizontally, that horizontal distance would be QD. And guess what? At that price, this amount is QD. And at that price, this amount is QD. What demand is showing is the quantity we will demand at every single price point, right? It is the entire relationship, hence it is the line itself. Here's a question for you. Can the quantity demanded change, but yet demand not change? And the answer is absolutely. Let's go through what I just said again, and it should be very clear, okay? I'm gonna put a few prices on here. So let's call this price one, price two, and price three. Now there's a bunch of other prices in between the ones I drew, but I'm just doing three. One thing also to understand is demand is made up of a bunch of different dots, right? A ton of different dots. I'm gonna show you three of those dots, okay? So here we go. This vertical distance is the price, this horizontal distance is the quantity demanded, right? So I'm gonna put QD and price. So that dot represents a P to QD relationship. But also, of course, this dot, let me make these dots kind of large. This dot also on the same demand curve represents a price, a vertical distance, and quantity demanded, a horizontal distance, QD, and I will put price right there. Finally, another price, right? Hitting the demand curve right there, put a dot, draw it down. This vertical distance is the price. This horizontal distance is the QD. There we go, QD and price, okay? So demand is showing us the relationship between price and quantity demanded. We, these are three specific coordinates on our demand curve. Understand that every dot is on the same demand curve, okay? This is a single demand function. Can the quantity demanded increase and yet demand not change? Absolutely. If what happens is price goes down, let's say from P2 to P3, if price goes down, well, we will move, of course, from this dot to this dot. The thing to notice as a student, guys, is demand changing. Again, demand is the relationship between QD and P, okay? It's showing all the different QDs at the different prices, right? If we just have a price decrease, well, demand change, no, okay? But quantity demanded well increase. So when that price goes down, we will move along the demand curve. That's the term we use in economics, a movement along the demand curve. And when you hear that movement along the demand curve, that means we're getting an increase in the quantity demanded. Now, let's just take one moment on that. 
See the tick marks right there? Yes, they are going down, okay? But our orientation to this graph, a supply and demand graph, is actually left and right. Because if you get into the weeds a little bit, you'll find out that, guys, price in this function is actually the independent variable, which is a weird thing, because math usually doesn't put the independent variable on the vertical axis. And quantity demanded is the dependent variable. And the dependent variable determines my orientation to the graph. Let me say that again. The dependent variable determines my orientation to the graph. So if I'm measuring the dependent variable horizontally on the horizontal axis, look what my hand's doing. It's going right and left. My orientation is right and left. So yes, these tick marks are going down. I don't really care. What I care about is the tick marks are moving to the right. So yes, we're getting an increase in the quantity demanded. And again, Yes, the quantity demanded is changing, it is increasing, but demand, the relationship is not changing. Now again, demand is a relationship between price and quantity demanded. Price, okay, is that independent variable. Sometimes you might hear the term endogenous variable. It's the variable in the function. And guys, demand was created, this instance of demand is created to handle changes in the independent variable, changes in the endogenous variable, the variable in the function. It was created to handle changes in price. So if price changes, demand's not gonna change. It's there to handle changes in price. Remember, it's a relationship between price and QD. It's telling you the different QDs at all the different prices. So when price begins to change, demand is not changing. But price does and did change the quantity demanded. Now, what would cause demand to change? Well, for demand to change, something exogenous to this model, meaning external to this model would have to change. We call these determinants of demand, okay? Determinants of demand. Remember, demand is a function, it's a relationship. So when I say the term, the term determinants of demand, I'm saying the things that determine the relationship between P and QD. If something changes out there that changes the relationship between P and QD, Demand is gonna change, because that's what demand is, a relationship between P and QD. So what are these things external to this graph that affect the relationship between P and QD? Well, here's one, consumer taste or preference for the good. That's not on the graph, right? Or, or it's not a variable on the graph, right? It's exogenous, it's external to this graph, taste for the good or service, the consumer's taste or preference for the good or service. If that changed, let's say their taste for the good increases. Well, what does that mean? Hey, the demander will now demand more, okay, an increase in the quantity demanded at every price point. Oh, the relationship between P and QD is changing. What else could change this relationship, okay? The consumer's income. If the consumer's income change, of course, that's not on the graph, it's external to the graph. If that changes, it will, though, affect the relationship between P, Q, P and QD. It will change how much the QD is gonna be at every price point, how much we're gonna buy at every price point, okay? And of course, there are some others. There's the number of consumers, there's the price, of substitutes in consumption, price of complements in consumption, and there's also the consumer's expectations about future prices. All those things I just listed, they're external to the graph, and when they change, they change the P to QD relationship, hence they change demand itself, okay? So let's go back to what we said, an increase in consumer taste and preference. Oh, okay, we're now gonna buy more, the quantity we're gonna demand is gonna increase at all price points. So let me go to my dots again and say, hey, this is gonna increase, that quantity demanded is gonna increase at that price. Let's get this out of the way. At that dot, right, the quantity demanded is gonna increase at that price. And then again, the quantity demanded is gonna increase at that price right there. I connect these dots as best that I can, if I kind of miss, I just make the dot a little bit bigger. There we go. Demand sub one, demand sub zero. Guys, when the consumer's taste or preference for the good, again, an exogenous variable, something external 
to the graph, okay, changes. It changed the price to QD relationship. That's what demand is, is that relationship between P and QD. Demand changed. In fact, what did demand do? It increased. It shifted to the right. The quantity demanded increased at every single price point. Guys, get that down, okay? Demand is a relationship. It's a function, okay? Re showing the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Quantity demanded is just an amount. If you get a price change, we're just gonna say the quantity demanded change. We're not gonna say demand itself changed, okay? But if an exogenous variable that affects the P to QD relationship, not every exogenous variable affects the P to QD relationship, but if an exogenous variable that does affect the P to QD relationship changes, such as the consumer's taste or preference for the good, the income of the consumer, and all those other things I said, then you're gonna get a change in demand itself and the entire curve will shift. And anytime the curve shifts, the entire line shifts, demand is changing because the line, the curve, the entire line, the entire curve represents demand. It represents the relationship. And so when it shifts, demand is changing. I hope that helps that helps you out, guys. It also applies to supply and uh, supply and quantity supply. Supply is also a function. Quantity supplied is also an amount. Kind of works the exact same way for supply and quantity supply. Hope that made sense to you. See you in the next video.